my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding photography video, we'll be taking a look at a technique called split toning. You can see the effect right here, and what this is is we are adding coloration into a black white picture. Here's the basic black and white. Now it's a nice image, nice black and white image. I've adjusted the contrast a little bit in here using some levels to bring out a little more contrast, bringing out white whites, black blacks, and so forth. Just basic cleaning up. Now the important thing though is this ability to add coloration into this image. Now this is a custom coloration. I'll show you how you can do this in just a bit. First, let's see the basics on this. Let me just hide that layer. So we're back to our black and white layer. I'll bring this down just a little bit so you can see our menus up there. We'll be using a gradient fill and then blending the gradient fill with this image using blending modes which are right up there. So I'll go up to layer and come down to new fill layer right here and gradient. Just choose OK at that point. This brings in the gradients as you can see the default right here is the foreground to clear. Here's our black to white gradient, red to green, here's a purple to orange. So there are all these different gradients in here that you can use. Let's just grab this purple to orange one, kind of a standard one. There are lots of other gradient sets. We have color harmonies right there. We have color harmonies two, as you can see, and the default set. Kind of metallic looks, noise samples in there, pastel effects, and simple special effects and spectrums. Now on this, on any of these fills, you can adjust the angle in here to shift your colors around a little bit. Adds a bit more interest if they're at an angle. You can scale the effect up and down. See there kind of scales the amount of blend on that. You can reverse it if you want to. There we go. Align with layer. You can change your angle to a specific number. Let me just put in 90 degrees like that. That's straight up and down. And there are different styles as well. This is linear. Just a straight gradient. Here's an angled gradient. Kind of spins it around. Reflected. And a diamond shaped gradient. We'll stick with the linear for this discussion. Now on the gradients themselves, if you click on the gradient right there, it brings up the gradient editor. And we'll be using this in just a little bit. We'll come back to this in just a little bit. Let's choose OK. Let's now see how the blending modes are used to blend this layer in with our background layer. The first thing you want to do is you want to bring the opacity down so you can see through this a little bit. I'm using about 80% right there. You can just select that and type in 80 if you want to. This way we can kind of see where everything is, so that's fine. Now we also want to blend this. I only want to have just the color transferred, nothing else. So let's go over here to our, our blending modes. Scroll way down towards the bottom of the blending modes, right down there where it says color, choose that. And that just transfers the color as you can see. So the black and white is all retained and we've just transferred the color. And you can do this with all kinds of different gradients. Let me just do another one here. I'll do these steps a bit more quickly this way so you can get a good sense. So layer, fill layer, gradient. There we go. There's a new fill layer gradient. Let's choose a, a gradient off of here. Let's just go up and take a look at our color harmonies. I'm going to choose something really wild. Let's choose this wild one right there just so you can really see how this works. Choose OK. Bring the opacity down to 80% so you can see through and then change the blending mode 
to color. And there we go, we've applied those colorations in here onto this image. If you want to come back in and modify your gradient, just double click on the icon and it brings this panel back up again. We can now change this to a different gradient if you want to. So you can change these things around. You can change the angle if you want to, like that. There's kind of a different angle going on in here. So you have all kinds of additional options. I'll put this back to 90, which is straight up and down. Okay, let's now talk about the editor. Click on the gradient. Brings up the editor. You can see here is the gradient. These things at the top, these are called transparency stops and or opacity stops rather. And this one is fully opaque. That's fully opaque. You can see it right down here, 100% transparency. So you can adjust the transparency if you want to have it you know, fade in and fade out. You can do that. The bottom are the color stops. You can take a color stop off just by grabbing it and pulling it off like that. You can put a new one on, come right down beneath the line and click in there, puts a new one in. Now the color used is the last color that was available over here. All right, let's now adjust this, let's modify this for a little more interesting gradient. I want right down at the very, very end, click one here. I want to have white at this end. So I'm just going to drag up there to white and choose a okay, case. So there's white at that end. All the way down here, very bottom. Let's make a new one down here and I want pure black at that end. There we go. Let's bring another black right there. So I have a bit of black and I'll pull this over a little bit. And then I want another white right in here. So again, click on that, click on the color, choose white. So I have black at one end, white at the other end. Let's now go from a, a dark blue to a light blue, do something kind of in between here. And then we'll do a couple of more flesh tone type things. I want to have these basically evenly spaced. It doesn't need to be exact. Just basically evenly spaced. Let's now adjust our colors. Click on one, click on color. I want to have this one a dark blue. Let's come in here. Let's find our nice, nice dark blue way down in here somewhere. Looks pretty good. Let's come over to here. Now notice as I'm doing this, the colors are shifting over here as well on the image. You can actually watch what you're doing. I want this to be a little lighter blue. Let's come back into the blues again. Notice how the colors are changing over there. I'm keeping these fairly saturated this time, but you, you, can, you can go a lot softer if you want to on these. Maybe right about halfway. Saturation is your left to right in here if you're working with the hue, saturation, brightness, which is the default setting. So I'll go by halfway on my saturation, choose OK. Let's take this one even lighter, but I still want to have some color in here. I don't want to have this pure white. So I'll come back in and go real light on the, on the blue settings. There we go, real light blue. Let's now come in and a bit more of a flesh tone here and here, leading over to the white. So again, click on this. Now your flesh tones are over here further. They're in the yellow oranges and they're on the light side. Go a little more orange on that, I think, just a touch. There we go, choose OK. And then one more, click on this one. And let's change that color. And I'll come right back down into my yellows. I want just a nice even transition in here. So I can watch that color up there until I find a nice transition. Just kind of watch that for a nice transition, choose OK. So there we go, a nice even color shift. Now it's a bit too much purple, I think, on this down here. Let's just click on that and let's adjust this a bit more towards the blues, take out some of that purple. There we go. Choose OK, so that's making a custom gradient. Again, you can add in new color tab stops. Just click in there, brings a new color tab stop. The color it gives you is the existing color over here. To change the color, click on that and then choose a new color. To get rid of a stop, just pull it off like that and it goes away. Choose OK. So there's our new color gradient. Choose OK and there we go. Kind of an interesting color. Now notice how we're going 
you know, white up there. Maybe it's a bit too much at that point. I lifted black and white at the bottom down there, so that looks fine. A bit too much. I think I'll go back with my color at the top. So let's, again, edit this. Double click. Click on the gradient itself. Brings back up our editor. Let's just pull off one of those stops like that. I'll pull this over a bit. Now notice here between these two color stops, it's a little diamond shape. This is the center point of that color. So you know, here's my yellow. Here's my white. Right between those two is that. I can move the center point further over towards the white and actually shift the color further down towards this side. Or I can just get rid of the white altogether and leave pure color up there. See there's, there's pure color up there. I think what I really want though is not quite pure white. Close to that but not quite. So let's just click over here and I want something about like that. Let's come back up into our colors and I want just a little bit. There we go. It's a little bit of color still and that looks looks better up there. And again, you can adjust these controls here, the center points. I'll click on this one. There's our center points on those. So you can adjust those to adjust how fast the color is shifting from one color to another. So that's how you modify those gradients. So there we go. Color blending mode, opacity at 80%, and then just a standard gradient fill. Okay, going a little bit further on this, if you want to be a little bit fancier, let's say you wanted to have the coloration in the background, but not on the people. You can do that simply by going over here and painting on the layer mask. Click on that. Notice the blue outline. This layer mask is now selected. White is show everything. Black is hide. So let's go over to our paintbrush. Let me move this over just a little bit our paintbrush right there and if we go to the bottom down here we can see our brush settings there's the brush size you can see that there it is pretty easy to see there right there it's a soft edge brush that's fine for this use I don't mind if it bleeds a little bit on this I want black in front so make sure your colors is set to black in the foreground make sure you're on the layer mask and now as I paint in here notice how as I paint in I'm painting black onto the layer mask and that black is hiding the gradient. So I can remove the gradient from the figures by simply painting onto the mask and leaving the figures just black and white. Let me just come around here and do this over here on the, the bit of the hair net there. And let's get the part of the hat that shows. So there we go. Coloration in the background, black and white on the images. If you want to be real picky about this, you could come in here and make a very careful selection around the edges and then paint into that selection or fill the selection to be real, real specific. But this works out fine for this. Let's say you wanted to have this the exact opposite on that you don't want to have the black to white you want to have black and white in the background and color on the figures it's simply doing the exact opposite here let's just fill this I'm going to reverse my colors we have the foreground set of white as you can see I'm just going to quickly paint in here since that's a tool I happen to have in my hand at the moment so let's just paint back in I could just fill this with a foreground color and do it that way but what the heck, I'm lazy. So let's do it this way. And make sure we get all the edges. There we go, and a little bit over in there. Okay, so we're all back to white. Now if you want to have it the exact opposite, we want to leave the color in the figures, hide the color in the background. Same thing. Make sure your foreground color is black and you're on the mask and then simply paint into the background area of your picture instead of the foreground area. You see it right there. So in this case I'm hiding the gradient in the background but leaving the gradient on the figures giving me again the same kind of split toning effect 
but limiting where it's being applied for a little more of an interesting image. Let's just come down and do the bottom section right down here. There we go. So we now have the split toning coloration just on the figures and not on the background. So there's different variations in there on an approach to using this split toning technique. As you can see, there's lots of possibilities in here, lots of variations. I can you know, look at all kinds of different effects. There's one there. There's a different effect right there, a little more subtle. It's the same thing I did up here, but I used much more subtle colors on that one. Let me do one more. We didn't look at one particular kind of gradient. Let's do a new fill layer. Gradient, choose OK. There's a new fill layer. Let's go back in here to our gradients. Oh, wrong button. There we go, that little triangle right there. Let's go to the noise samples. These are just kind of interesting things. I'm going to choose this one here with a lot of color variation on it. Yeah, I think that one's good. Just as an example. Now these gradients are real rough. If you click on the gradient tool here, you'll see that under type, there's noise. There's solid. That's what we did before. It was a solid gradient. Most of the gradients are like that. Or you have noise gradients in here with these kind of random noises. You can adjust that by adjusting your slider controls down here. You can randomize that. Just click on this. It'll randomize different colors. Or you can change the effect in here by adjusting your slider controls. And you can adjust how rough the colors are right here. To the left they become very, very smooth. To the right they become very, very rough. So you have this additional type, these rough or noise type gradients. Let's just see how this looks. Choose OK. Everything else is exactly the same. Set the opacity at 80% and then use the color for your blending mode. And there you go. See, you can kind of see those lines in there. Just a different effect, a different look, depending upon what you want to do. Okay, let's go back and go back to when we have the coloration just on the figures. So there you go. That's how to do split toning on a black and white image adding in some color in there to your black and white image, making it a little more interesting. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.